I'm Paul Bennett at Shoestring Shipyard here in Millbridge, Maine. We're located along Maine's Bowl Coast, not very far from the U.S. Canadian border. This video that I'm about to run on how to make your own Duraid box and your own cowl vent inexpensively was posted, well I made this a few months ago and posted it on my Down East Thunder Creations channel. What I neglected to say is that when I built this Duraid box and I used the toilet flange and a piece of a PVC street L, I forgot to mention the reason why the flange is mounted on top of the box. Looks kind of ugly. I would have to make some sort of decorative ring around it. People commented saying, well gee, why didn't you just put the flange on the inside of the box? And that would be a good thing to do, and I had considered doing that. But the problem is, you see the flange is a little bit too big. It doesn't fit inside the box. So why not make the box a little bit bigger? And the reason for that is I designed this for my 18-foot sailboat, and space is very limited, and where this vent is going to be located, there's really not enough room to build a larger box. Just a few inches wider, it'd be too wide. That's why I mounted it on top. If you want to save a few bucks, if you're a sailor, you're probably frugal, like me. Give it a shot. If you're not familiar with a Duraid box, it's simply a device that allows you to get ventilation into your boat, but allows the air in, separates any water out when you get any spray, if you take green water over the bow. Typically, when you build a Duraid box, you'll use a cowl vent similar to this. Now this is a store-bought marine type cowl vent. It's an old one. It's got some dirt on it. It's missing the flange that it mounts to. These run, one this size is typically around $26 to $30 roughly, give or take a couple of bucks. Plus shipping. That adds to another 10 bucks or so onto the bill. You can get pricey if you're going to put a couple of Duraid vents in. I'm going to see if I can find a flange for this to build my Duraid box, but I want to have at least a couple of Duraid boxes on that little 18 foot sailboat that I'm building. So I'm going to go a little bit ghetto, but I do have a good solution that works. Later on in the video I'm going to show you how I build the whole box, but for now, just an explanation. This is a, a flange for a toilet. Now this gets mounted into the floor. A typical water closet or toilet gets mounted onto this. But if you flip it upside down and you take a street L, which is just a 90 degree elbow, that fits in just like that. And guess what? You have yourself a cowl vent. Now yeah, I know it doesn't look all yachty, but it works. This is a 3 inch one, but you could build a 4 inch one and you can get even larger sizes, although a lot more expensive. But this here was very inexpensive. Now the flange at the big orange box store cost me $4.80. And this Street L cost me $3.80. So for less than 10 bucks, I have myself a cowl vent and that will fit on top of my Duraid box. Interestingly, you can buy a regular elbow. The problem is the regular elbow has two female ends. But a street L has a female end on one end here, which is kind of my scoop, and the other end has a male end that fits right into the flange. And I can, you can move it around. You don't have to cement it in place so that, you know, if you're an anchor or if you're tied up in a dock or whatever, you can move this vent around in whatever direction is most advantageous to get a breeze into the boat. But when you're out at sea, if you're in heavy weather, you can take a little piece of 3 inch PVC pipe and cement a cap onto it and that'll also slide in here and just cap off the Duraid box so you don't get anything in there. I'll put together a few drawings, I'll probably post those on my Patreon page. 
I don't charge anything for any of my drawings. I always give them away for free. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I like to use old wood that's been repurposed. So essentially my materials aren't costing me anything beyond the PVC pieces that I bought for my Duraid vent. Now, there will be a hole in the deck with a piece of PVC pipe sticking up. I'll do a diagram. I'll, I'll put something together to show you what, that, what that's going to look like. But if this were the top of the deck, you would have a hole through the deck and you need a flange, but this won't go on the top side. It would take up too much room. You might have something on the underside. And the pipe, the PVC pipe, will also fit in the other direction. It'll, you know, so you can have a piece of sticking up. And then you have a baffle in between. This piece would be on top of the drain box with your cowl vent. And with a baffle in between and a little piece of pipe sticking down, this way here, water can't get up and over the baffle and then down below into the cabin. Again, I'll put together a diagram so you can see how that works. It's very simple. But I'm going to use this repurposed wood. I think I'll use a section of this for the top. And I'll rip this down, cut this for the sides. I'm going to make it about maybe six inches high, 14 inches long. The width is going to be about eight inches. The diameter of this flange is about seven, so it's going to sit on top and it'll have a little bit on extra overhanging. reason for that hole. This flange is going to mount on top. I normally have a nice clean hole for the air to flow, but I'm going to have a piece of straight pipe that goes from this flange. It'll extend just a few inches down into the box because there'll be another one that extends up from the deck that the box goes over and there'll be a baffle in between so that water doesn't get to go inside the, the boat. That's all there is to that. And then I've got to put the box together. Normally I glue this up and I use my brad nailer to help tack it while the glue sets up and then I go ahead and I put the screws in. Instead I'm using these uh, Rockler 90 degree clamps and I'm going to glue it and I'm going to go ahead and screw it. I'll do each one and I'll put it together. put two screws on the top for now because I'm not going to glue the top to the box. Instead I'm going to put a gasket under here so that allows me to take the top off if I ever want to get inside and clean it out. 
Uh, it makes it easier to install because I'm going to have cleats on the inside rather than the outside. So then when I attach it to the deck, I can screw it and you'll just see a nice flush edge around here. There won't be any cleats on the outside. But not only can I install it, as I mentioned, it's easier for me to maintain. Right in the middle, I'm just going to put a baffle. That's it, really. And it's just mounting the hardware. And I just have to screw that down. But I'm not going to worry about this until I get it all coated with epoxy, fiberglass, all that sort of thing. I may not even fiberglass it. I might just put a couple of coats of epoxy on it. One thing I want to point out is that when you use this PVC for your uh, cowl vent, you have to understand that the PVC, this was designed for drain piping, does not have any UV protection in the, uh, in the material. And so if you just use it without painting it, then what will happen is eventually it will break down and it will get brittle, it will crack, it will break apart. So uh, there are paints, I think Rust-Oleum and Krylon are both manufacturers that make paints now that will bond to plastic, it says so right on the can. You will have to prep this, like maybe take some alcohol or something and wipe it all down because there's like a mold release, there's some kind of film on there. Yeah, you don't really feel it, but it does exist. You want to clean this really well. Maybe even a, a light sanding. That's it for now. You get the idea. It's a very simple project. Uh, something you can do on your own boat and you can make these any size you like. I just finished telling you about installing this homemade cowl vent. One thing I forgot though while assembling this to raid box. I, I did mention the baffle will go in later doesn't have to go now. But what I forgot to mention is that you need to put a couple of limber holes. You need to have a couple of limber holes, maybe one on each side, uh, maybe a couple on the end since the deck is going to be pitched a little bit like this. The water can run out. They don't have to be very big. I've seen a few of these Durade boxes on boats, some made out of fiberglass. They have no way of taking them apart or opening them up to get inside them. I don't like that. That's the reason why this cover is going to get a little gasket and it'll just be screws where I can take it off. If you are in an environment, high humidity, a lot of heat, you could build up a lot of mold and mildew inside that Durade box. And of course this is part of your ventilation system, that air going down into your cabin. You don't want to be breathing it. So every now and then you want to be able to take off this top so you can get in there with a little bit of bleach and and uh, some detergent or something, you want to be able to wipe it out and clean it. And the other thing too is that the, uh, the piece of PVC pipe that sticks up through the deck that's on this other end, on the top you want to put a piece of hardware cloth or you know, you know uh, like the type of thing you put on a screen door. You want to put that screen over there and secure it maybe with some zip ties or something else. Over time if there are insects that get in there they might clog up that screen. You want to be able to take this off, clean it out, maybe even replace the screen from time to time. So these are the reasons why you want that top to come off. As far as the limber holes go, I'm just taking a jigsaw and I'm just going to cut a couple of little triangles, just notch it. That's all I've done. I've cut a couple of notches. That'll help any, any moisture or any slop to be able to drain out. I'll just put a couple on the side as well. Boat's healed over, it can drain out. Okay, a couple of limber holes there on that end. And now with the exception of the baffle, which is just a strip of wood, only about maybe half the height of this, so that the air can flow up and around. Put it right in the middle. That's it, my drain box is finished. This I'll screw on later. I'll probably use some butyl tape right around the base. It doesn't really matter. If it, even if it leaked a little, it wouldn't matter, but I'll seal it anyway. So you'll see some of these cowl vents, and they have different shapes. They might be a bit oval, up and down like this, or like this one I have here, sideways. Well, if you want to get fancy, what you could do is you could heat this up with a heat gun and get it really warm and toasty. 
Uh, or you can put it in a, in a toaster oven and keep an eye low setting, let it get all warm where it gets, uh, you know, it gets soft and you can take a pair of gloves and you can shape it. And uh, when it cools down it will hold that shape. The other thing you can do is you can get a cone and you can warm this up because you might want it flared out more. Now you can get a, you can get a reducer that goes from like 4 inch to 3 inch and so that will give you a bit of a flare or you can just heat this up, put it over a cone, squash it down so that the plastic just stretches and it flares out. Anyway, this is a Durade box. It's a very simple one. It's going to work just fine on my new sailboat.